What is up? Pokemon Unite just released on the mobile phone recently. So that means we can now actually play the game on an emulator such as Bluestacks. So I thought I'd make a little tutorial on how to make the control scheme a bit more like a, a MOBA because at the moment we have controls by default on Blue, for example on Bluestacks. We've got WASD to move and when you try and cast a skill we can't really move a skill to aim unless we hover over the skill click it with the left mouse and drag it around like this around the little circle to aim so if I had uh, do a quick tutorial now to sort of make it a bit more like a mobber so what you want to do is go to the controls at the right the game controls you can either left click and go to open advanced editor uh, you can just simply right click the game controls so this is on blue stacks I'm not sure if it's exactly the same on other emulators so what we want to do here is we want to create a new profile so it's the drop down at the top here so now it creates one called custom which is the new one you can rename it to whatever you want so we'll just call it Pokemon for this example or you can just leave it as custom and now it'll wipe all the default controls off the screen now this is what we want to set so by default we have d-pad that's what was set on the default controls but what we need is the one called moba d-pad so if we drag this over the the movement control and we want to go to the settings and we need to go to the where it says hero dummy and click this little character looking icon this will set the center of where you want the movement to be so we want the movement Sometimes it's a bit hard to select the... There we go. We want the movement to be around our character from from our clicks. So we want to move this roughly to where our character is. And save this. And we can just try that out. So if I right click to the left, he'll move left. Right click to the right, he'll move right. Now as you can see, he does overshoot with his, with his movement. However, this can be adjusted. So if we go back to the controls... Open advanced editor, back to the little cog here, settings. We want to adjust the hero speed, so higher numbers will decrease the amount of time he, he moves and increasing it uh, and decreasing it will make him move further. So we want to increase this, so I'll put it about 25. I think that was seems to be a pretty good amount because I did a bit of testing earlier. So save. Let's click here. Yep, so that looks okay for now. I mean, you can tweak around with it. You can also tweak around with with the actual, with this. Oh, the, it's a bit hard to, there we go. With this, just to find a, a better place for it. Okay. The next thing is we want to add a skill. So you can literally just click, say we want to add a button to return to base. So we can literally just left click here. And then you can press a key that you want. So let's say we want B. So now we've got that as as B. So now when I click B, it'll cast the the base skill. So over the buttons that you want. So for like this is the capture button on on the mobile game. So if we want to put one there all we have to do is just left click there and then press a button that we want so we could use control we can use C maybe C is better to, to C for cap so when we work over a point we could just press C to cap now it's a little bit different from the skills because we what we want to do is to be able to sort of control it a bit more like a MOBA sort of style so what we need is the MOBA skill pad so if we drag this over say media, media bash and say so we want it a bit more like a MOBA, so we want that as like the second skill. So if I set that to W and click, so you can set that to whatever you want. Uh, using the MOBA skill pad allows us to, when we press the button and hold it, by default it will be quick cast. So once I press, I can press the button and hold it, and the aimer will come up, and I can still use my right click to move around. And as soon as I release the button, it'll cast the skill. Now there are different options for this. We's, oops, we've also got manual cast. Now this is just basically the non 
smart cast or quick cast version where you tap the button, you can let go and it'll still be up until you press left click to cast. So I prefer quick cast but if you do prefer this kind of method of using the skill you can also do it this way as well. And then left click to cast but I do prefer the, the quick cast. We've also got the option of stop movement. So stop movement, as it as the name implies, stops your movement. But this is when you cast the skill. Say I click on this capture point here to move to it. If I cast my skill while I'm moving to it, my character will stop. However, if I have it disabled, I will turn stop movement off. So save changes. I click here and I cast. It should carry on moving. One second. Do that. Yep. So let's try that again. So I'll click here, cast, and it carries on moving. But it's a bit wonky. The the kind of the the movement. See, so carried on a little bit and carried on and then stopped. So it's a bit off because it's based on the the timing. So I at the moment I just prefer to have that off. To be honest. I mean, I prefer. I'm used to games where the character just stops on cast anyway, so that's my preferred way at the moment, anyway. So, because it's supposed to carry on moving to the even after you've cast the skill, so. But yep. Yeah. Now, the problem is, I haven't found a way to do like an attack. You can't really, from to my knowledge, you can't really have it set so you just click on a. Pokemon to attack them. Uh, so what I do is I've just been using the space bar to attack. So if we go to game controls, left click the attack button, put that as space. So I've just been using that as space. So I'm just on the tutorial. Let's say if you move around, you can just use space to attack. You can also hold the button as well. And the good thing is if you hold the space button while you're holding right click, it'll attack as soon as it as soon as it can. As long as you haven't been interrupted by like a stun or anything, you'll attack off based on your attack speed up. So if you've got faster attack speed, you your Pokemon will attack faster, but as soon as it can attack it'll attack. Or you can just mash the attack as normal. So I've switched to Gardevoir to show an issue that you might have if you play a character with long range skills that instead of having like the line skill shots you have like a an aiming rectangle now the issue is so left and right seem to be fine but when you go to the top or the bottom you can't quite reach the edge now this can be remedied by just increasing the size so we go back to the settings increasing the size of the the circle so the control so here we go if we go, you can manually drag it from the bottom right hand corner or you can go to more settings and you can just alter the radius here so if we set that to like say 20 or maybe 25 I think now when I use it I'll be able to reach the bottom on top of the skill the whole thing now And if you want to, another way, another thing that you might want to do is not cast the skill. So one way you can do it is just press the attack button while you're holding the skill. And that will cancel cancel the skill. So I'm just pressing, for me at the moment, it's space. Oh, there's another way. So the other way is you're going to have to change the setup here. So if you go to the actual in-game controls. And you want the, where are we, the, the move cancelling control. So you need to be on slide to icon for this one to work. So this will give you the, normally you would have to slide to this button to cancel. So if we click this one. So as you see, when I've got a skill, we have like these, the X in the corner of where you need to slide it to cancel. So what you need to do now is you go to your game controls. Actually, it's easier if you go there while the skill's open. 
So, got the skill open, now I'll open the country. Ah, I guess I can't do it that way. But we know the buttons around this area here. So what you want to do is you want to go to the settings for the button. And you have the option of cancel skills, so you want to enable this. Now there's an option here, place the point on the cancel key here. See the little circle so we want to click this. And we want to drag this to roughly where the button was, so it was around there. You can always alter it if you don't put it in the right place. Um, left click it and you'll be able to choose the button. So let's have S, for example. So save this. Now when I press W, I can press S and it'll cancel. And the reason why it drags up is because if you was actually playing it on like a mobile phone, you'd have to drag upwards towards that point. So I'm just pressing S and I can cancel. I can move around with it up. Press S to cancel. So that's another way to, to cancel it. Oh, you can use the attack button. But some scenarios you might not want to use the attack button because it might walk you in range or something like that to attack unless you've got that disabled, which I should have it disabled, yeah. Um, and let me think if there's anything else with the controls. So yeah, so that makes it pretty much a bit more like, well, it makes it a bit more like a mob. It's not exactly because we're having to use space to attack or whatever button you set to attack. We've still got like B to recall, C to score is what I've set at the moment. But yeah, so you can also do it with the rest of the other moves as well. So say so unite move. So here we go. So we want the mob skill pad again. Make it a bit bigger because otherwise we'll run into the same issue again if it's especially if it's a longer casting spell. Uh, once again settings more settings. Uh, you can do the cancel again if you want, or just if you want to just use the attack button, you can also do that as well. So forgot to set a button, so ah uh, so that's be like my alt. See, here we go. I'm just in practice mode, so I've got cooldowns off, so I could just spam the thing. <laughs> I'll see, yeah, that's mostly like a mobile. I don't think there's anything else. Let's have a look. Um, Yep, so thank you for watching. I hope that helped if you wanted to try it on the the emulator. It's not it's not hundred percent perfect and it can crash sometimes because emulation is not always the most perfect uh thing, especially uh at the moment anyway. So sometimes it can crash the game just in case uh you end up playing the game and you just crash in mid game. It can crash sometimes. I've not really had many crashes but then again when the switch game first came out it crashed quite a lot on the switch as well so so yep yeah. so hope that helped and thank you for watching